G'day, g'day. It's Nick here, and this is, of course, Mia. And uh, in the last couple of weeks, there has been a couple of articles shared around about the fact that there has recently been the first successful trial of IVF in kangaroos. And uh, the world of social media has exploded with people saying, why would we breed more kangaroos? And why don't we focus on more endangered animals and all sorts of things? And you know what? In some ways, it's a fair enough question. Why would we use IVF on one of the most abundant species here in Australia? So in this video, we're going to talk all about it. Stick around. So first off, despite some of the claims in these uh, comments that kangaroos are in plague proportions, this is too nuanced to sort of talk about in this video. But very roughly, there is some places where kangaroos are in very abundant numbers. There are some places where they're in stable numbers, and there's actually places where there is way less kangaroos than there historically should be. So it's a complex subject. But on average, kangaroos are certainly not endangered. So why are we using kangaroos and IVF? Well, actually, that is the exact reason we're using IVF on kangaroos. You see, this is a technology that could have repercussions and conservational benefits on all sorts of other species, but the best way to test this out is not with a high-risk species where every individual counts, but with a readily available species that we already know about that if it doesn't work, we haven't removed the opportunity to breed one more individual where one more individual really matters. So kangaroos are a great prototype for a whole range of marsupials. You see, even within the broader kangaroo family, which is known as the macropods, we have a bunch of species, like some of our betongs, our potteroos, rock wallabies, etc., who are in dire need of conservation if they are to survive into the future. Even something like this little girl here, the red-bellied or Tasmanian paddy melon, which, while abundant in Tasmania, is actually supposed to live here on the mainland. It died out here back in the 1800s thanks to habitat loss and cats and foxes. So even within the kangaroo family, conservation is required and this is the first step to making some of these possible things we'll talk about a reality. Now while that's all very concerning, why IVF? It's not like IVF alone is going to save endangered species, but it could be useful for several different reasons. One great example is our wombats. You see here in Australia we have three species of wombats. Boo is what we call the bare nose or common wombat and for the most part she's doing okay. There's also the southern hairy nose wombat, but then there's the northern hairy nose wombat, who today numbers somewhere between 300 and 400 individuals, making it one of the most endangered animals on the planet. Now, once upon a time, they numbered just 30. So we have brought them back from the uh, brink of extinction, but it's really important to maintain genetic integrity. Today, they're in two separate populations. For their own safety, they're in fenced reserves, but there's no gene flow between these populations. And with technologies like IVF, we can basically breed an animal from one of these populations with one from another without actually having to capture and relocate and remove them from the breeding programs. So we can breed animals that have never actually met in real life. Now technologies like IVF wouldn't just potentially make it possible to breed animals in different geographical places, but potentially we could actually breed animals who are even alive at different times. If you take the bandicoots, for example, many of whom, just like this little southern brown bandicoot, are already listed as endangered. And amongst them, we have the eastern barred bandicoot, who is not just endangered, he was actually considered on the mainland extinct in the wild. You see, back in the 1900s, they were found from Melbourne all the way to the South Australian border. And due to foxes and cats and habitat loss, there was only a handful left by the 1980s. Now, while they rescued those and put them into breeding programs, they had such a small population that they started having genetic issues. Things like undershot jaws and uh, small litter sizes and infertile animals because of inbreeding. Now, thankfully, in this specific case, they managed to remedy the problem by actually crossing them with eastern barred bandicoots from down in Tasmania who are unrelated. But with this IVF technology, it opens up the possibility to breed them with animals that actually don't even exist anymore. If we have specimens in museums that we can extract DNA from that are completely unrelated to today's animals, we can use that fresh genetic material to put these into other species. So we can increase genetic diversity using animals who no longer have the opportunity to be included in breeding programs. Eventually, this sort of technology might one day make it possible to use a more abundant species like the bare-nosed wombat hiding in here as a surrogate mother 
for an endangered one. Now already we've done this with rock wallabies by taking a joey out of a brush-tailed rock wallaby and placing it in the pouch of a yellow-footed rock wallaby. However, it actually sacrifices the baby yellow-footed rock wallaby to do it. Technologies like this mean we could actually implant the embryo of an endangered northern hairy-nosed wombat into a bare-nosed wombat, meaning that we are doubling or even more the number of an endangered species that is able to be bred every year using a more abundant, more suited to captivity species and helping their endangered cousins. Now, while all these wonderful ideas could be a very, very long way off, proving that IVF is actually possible in a marsupial is of course the first and very important start. And while it sounds like a funny idea to be using IVF in kangaroos, it is the best starting place for this. Add to that that we have the worst track record for mammalian extinctions on planet Earth. We have lost 39 native mammals since 1788. We've got another 46 that are listed as endangered and nine that are actually critically endangered. So while it might seem funny to be breeding more kangaroos to a lot of people, kangaroos might just help us save a whole bunch of equally iconic and just as important native Australian species. So there you have it guys. That is just a few reasons why, despite what you might think, IVF in kangaroos is actually a breakthrough as far as conservation science goes and it could make a massive difference to the Australian environment and the conservation of our species. With all that in mind this is of course the end of the video so if you have liked the video please uh, leave a like, leave a comment, tell us what you'd like to see next, subscribe to the channel and uh, check on back next time because there is lots more wildlife stuff coming. Have a good one and take care.